I kept an eye on all of these policies and regulations that were proposed by the European Commission under the pretext of uh, fighting the carbon emissions. But she said it in 2019, the objective of all of these policies is not to save the planet, but to change our behavior. So it's a social construct. It has nothing to do with ecology, with saving the planet. It's talking and it's referring to a system that will fully control the population to force the population or to educate or to domesticate people, as they used to call it, in a certain way. And we saw that happening during the pandemic. Well, I don't want that kind of Europe. It's inconceivable. What do you mean that you cannot work if you don't inject something in your body? That's the reason why in Europe we have the so-called Nuremberg Code. Then you have the Oviedo Convention, which is clearly stipulating that no one should be forced to a medical treatment unless the person is decided based on a free and informed consent. Then we have this uh, provision mentioned in the European Charter of Basic Fundamental Rights. So, I mean, there's, there's, we have legal guarantees. But we saw hap what we saw happening during the pandemic, it's the, the, the total reverse of those guarantees. And uh, one by one, under Ursula von der Leyen, the European Union is copying these policies from China. I Meaning in China there is a social credit system where you cannot do certain things, you cannot use your bank account if you write something online against the government in Europe. If you criticize the government, then there are people already who have problems. You know, their social media accounts are shut down. Their uh, videos are uh, deleted <laughs> from, from the Internet. I mean, we see all of this. I was very reluctant, for example, to all these theories. Some people are calling them conspiracy theories. Uh, theories about World Economic Forum. But when the pandemic started and I started talking about what was going on, I received many messages, you know, and private messages from people and say, hey, stuff they are, stuff they are criticizing, <laughs> you know, was mentioned a few years ago in a WEF, whatever, summit somewhere. Then I start looking and I realized, oh my God. I mean, in the, Europe, in the European Parliament in the years of 2020, 2021, 2022, there's regulations proposed by the European Commission that are copied from whatever they mentioned at WEF a few years before. So, I mean, in one case, let's say it's a coincidence, but when you have too many of this, then you're raising, uh, you're raising your eyebrows. I looked into the WHO uh, institution, I would say, and that's when they came up with this proposal of a treaty, because it's not ratified yet, but it's, it's in the early stage, I would say, that will force pretty much the countries that are ratifying it to um, move a lot of the decision-making process from their national authorities to WHO. So when WHO, for example, is uh, stating that there's a pandemic, they can exercise many of the authorities above that uh, or on behalf of the state. Uh, you will have unelected officials, bureaucrats, often unknown bureaucrats, deciding on behalf of your state. And if they decide that something that is wrong for the people, they will not be accountable because you don't even know who those people are. In Europe right now, for example, they are imposing a new vision of the European treaties where there's no supremacy of the national constitution. In other words, as here in the States, for example, when they when you want to become a U.S. citizen, you have to learn a hundred questions. Uh, and one of the questions is, what is the Constitution? And the answer is the supreme law of the land. Well, imagine that in Europe, the new vision of the European Commission is that the Constitution is not the supreme law of the land. There's the European law, which is above the Constitution. Well, the, you cannot have anything above the Constitution. Even an international treaty or an international convention, when you ratify it, that convention cannot be against your constitution because exactly as you have a, an NGO, for example, with certain bylaws, and without those bylaws, the NGO cannot operate. It's the same thing with the, with the state. So what we see right now happening is the, the transfer of many of these um, powers that the national states and national governments have to these international institutions that are in control of people that we don't even know. They want to change this world order that we used to live in, you know, where the 
the individual is more important than the state and then the government and the bureaucrats into a new world where the government, where the unelected officials, where the bureaucrats are more important than the people. And this is exactly the Marxist ideology. Because they, they all talk about future, about these you know, futuristic plans. We want this world, we want this. But okay, hold on a second. Where were we? Where we are and where we are heading? Because you have a flower, if you cut the flower, you give it to a woman, for example, it's not going to last for long, a day or two, three days, then it's going to die. It's the same with the tree. You need deep roots in order for that tree to survive any kind of storm. So what they are doing right now, they are cutting these roots. So the next generations are, all, are not even realizing who they are because they don't know who they were. Mm. So in order to control the future, it's enough, not necessarily to control the present, but to cut the connection with the past. So for us in the West, it's very important that every generation will be reminded about the importance of individual freedom, national sovereignty, respect for fundamental rights, supremacy of national constitution.